Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And uh, we're just slowly panning the camera around so you can have a, a good look at last week's um, little effort I'm putting the canopy on. Um, I think I, I said in the comments there's still a, a little bit more to do to the canopy. There's some brackets uh, I need to add underneath and uh, it, it does need weathering at some point. Uh, yeah, you can see the reflection of the uh, of the rose window in there. Going, yeah, looks like it. Maybe not. So the job that we've all been waiting for. putting on the oval roof to cover the tracks now in a way it would be a shame to cover them but in another way it will finish the station off the first thing I want to tackle is the fascias either end of the station um, and the photographs are very very rare indeed of the fascias but I do have one here so I will have to go buy this one but uh, there's one piece I won't be doing and that's the, the door that you see there because I want the um, opening as big as possible so we can see into the station area now there is a photograph in the 1960s at the other end of the station where all that panelling there was taken out and you just have the beam coming down if you notice there's a little bracket there underneath the cross piece to the left hand side which, I'll, uh, which I will try and replicate using copper wire but um, so that would be the first thing to do is to make the fascias up on both ends of the platform and to make those big capping stones Here we have a drawing that I did back last year. Um, as you can see, we have the fascia and then we have the two sets of cobblestones, um, which I'm going to make in the minute. So that's what we have to concentrate on first is these. So let's bring back that original photograph that we just looked at, and we can go right in. 
So that's what I've got to make first. I've got to make four of those. So what I'll do is I'll take some measurements of the bricks that are there and uh, make these up. I have now drawn up uh, this cobblestone. Uh, as you can see I've drawn it from the front view, top view. I've worked out what to do for the top, the base and how I'm going to build the actual cube because there's a cube which sits in there and then the base just gets glued on top. So that's that's my theory on how I'm going to do this. So I have already pre-cut the blocks which I'm going to glue together and hopefully make up the main cube for the cobblestone. So I need to glue seven of these little bits of 2 mil card together. Now the sizes are 16 by 10 mil. So I need seven of these to make up for the 14 mil and by the time I wrap it in a piece of paper that'll be 15 mil. Bit of a sticky situation this. See in a bit. So now that we've glued our cardboard um, strips together and made a block, now it's time to add you know, the paper. Um, basically, I've cut the paper so it wraps around twice and you end up with a nice smooth finish like that. So it's just a case of gluing it on and then wrapping it round. As you see it's gone around the second time now. Last little bit. And it's always handy to have a wet wipe handy. So now that the blocks are made, the next piece I'm doing is these down pieces. Now there's six per gobble stone and uh, this is how I'm doing it. I have made one already. Now as you can see I've got some 2 mil strips of card, 3.5 wide, 20 mil deep. And what I've done there, I don't know if you can see that, if you look on the edge I have compressed it with a 4mm drill bit in the center to give it that sweep as you can see on the edge of the card and I think that's the feature you can see in the photograph so what I'm doing is um, keeping it flush to the top and then just marking it bang in the center of the edge to the edge of the uh, actual lock so it's right in the center and then we just get our three mil drill hold it on the line and press really hard now one thing I have noticed is once you get that shape after a while it starts springing back so I've now decided to put a little bit of super glue around the edge just so I don't lose that shape now we all know how absorbent this piece of card is. So it's like a sponge, so once that super glue goes into there it should hold its shape. And then we just glue them on. Making sure it's flush with the edge and then flush with the top because we got a capping stone to go on here. Do you remember last week when we touched on with the have a Tyson. Now look at this classic photograph from the 1940s. I mean, look at all this advertising. 
you got Rolos, you got HP sauce, caramel toffees, Palatorp sausages, uh, strike beer is it? Or stripes? Strike I think, strike beer. I mean, I mean any little piece of water was fair game back then. Right, as we're moving on, I have stuck in a toothpick into the base. This will come in handy later on for painting um, and weathering these stones. And I've also given an ID as well. So this is a, because I've marked out the walls on the station as well. So these fit each individual wall. And the toothpick will come handy for when we come to glue these when it's finished onto the wall. So we just drill a little hole into the pillar and then drop this in. So the next thing we want to do is to do the go back to this photograph again is to do these two pieces here. The piece that goes across there and across there before we put the top on. So as you can see I've filled in all the gaps between these uprights here with some more card even on the ends and on the sides as well. The back well, I'm going to leave the back. I ain't going to do anything with the back. What I might do with the back is just put another piece of card and just cover that up. Because the, um, the start of the oval roof is right on the back of these um, gable stones. Right, so, little tip for you. These are too thin to try and trim um, on their own because they're only 2mm thick. So what I've been doing is, I've been super gluing a little bit of card into that corner, or into these corners, and then waiting for it to go off, and then just trim it afterwards. it a lot easier than trying to trim a little 2 mil piece and then put it in there. The chances are it'll just peel away, it'll just disintegrate. What I'm doing now is just um, wrapping the card around the lower section there and the upper section. Um, the lower section is just basically the thin craft card, very very thin, you can, you can get this card anywhere and um, oops, split it. What I'm doing now is um, wrapping some card around the lower section of this stone if you like and then one mil card around the top section like we have with these, these are already been done. Um, so basically it's just a basic um, ordinary thin card for this um, it's not craft card it's just basic thin card and I'm just wrapping it around there just ties in all those little bits ready for when we come to add some more card because it's, it's all about building layers up going to mark that with a pencil and cut it. So that's what we're up to now. The next piece we're going to focus on is this little decoration inside the two down columns if you like. And I think it looks something like that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to cut four little pieces of card and imprint that on with a pen and then stick them into these hollow sections here. I have done three already so I'm just doing this uh, last one to show you how I'm doing it. So I'm just a circle pressing hard as I can. A line coming out of each of the centers
a little bit of glue into there and just drop that in. Just gently push it in because I don't want to lose the impression I've already made on the card. So I'm just pressing it home in the corners and all the glue should ooze out. And with a Q-tip, just wipe out the excess. There we do. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to add some flutes to the sides of these stones. And I'm just using a toothpick. And I'm cutting them down to 8mm, which is the width that's in the gap between the two stone faces here and here. Now you can see where I'm going to put them now. I'm going to put them on the corners. And uh, let's try and cut this toothpick. There we go. So I've got eight pieces, two, four, six, eight. And where I'm going to glue these, I'm going to glue these into the corners there. Like so. It's hard to make out that the detail I've just added is in the photograph, but uh, if it's not there, then it's uh, my little spin on it. And this is what it looks like. I just think it adds that little something. And I'm a, I am actually tempted to drop them in there as well. So now that I've finished tinkering and adding my own little bits to it, um, I think we'll get back to what is, is actually on the photograph, what I can visually see. And as you can see, I've, I've dropped the <laughs> toothpick in there as well, just to add some extra detail. It'll be interesting to see what this looks like um, once it's painted. But um, going back to the photograph, this ridge line is definitely on the photograph. And all I'm doing there is just sticking some uh, one mil by one point five mil, just around the edge. So I'll continue with that. And finally, we have now come to doing the top. As you can see with these, I've just stuck a piece of one mil card on the top, um, roughly with a millimeter ledge all the way around, except for the back. For the back, I've just kept it flush. Right, so for the main capping stone, we have four pieces of 20mm by 15, which will sit bank centre of the capping stone. But to give it the height that we have on the photograph, it's going to be with another piece of card glued on top. But we need to put a chamfer on the top. So basically what I've done is, I've come away from the edge, about 2 millimeters, using a craft knife, but it's got to be a brand new sharp craft knife, coming across the whole lot at 45 degrees, and then just peeling that edge off. And once you've done all four corners, what I'm going to do next is cover those edges in super glue and then sand them down. And then once the sand is down, I will glue uh, the top capping stone to the bottom capping stone and then glue them onto the main coping stone. So as you can see I'm just adding a little bit of super glue along that edge. The card will absorb that and um, it will be uh, ready for sanding. And then it's just a case of uh, sanding it down, 
holding it at 45 degrees. Putting the chamfer on. By doing this, you can put a nice equal chamfer on all the way around. If at any point the card starts coming through, then just put another bit of super glue on. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is 2 mil card. That's ready for gluing. And once that's done, then all you've got to do is just glue it to the top and you'll end up with something like this. Check the photograph again, and these were originally made from brick, and I've decided to paint them in a sandstony colour. Now, although they look similar in shape and in size, they're not going to be a hundred percent original. Because I've decided to paint them instead. I mean, can you imagine trying to make these using brick card? That's why I've gone for this option. Uh, the paint I'm using is a matte 148. And uh, I might need a couple of coats just to soak in to the card. And once these are painted, it's just a case of weathering them up and giving them that really dirty look as sandstone gets. Right, so these have been dried for a couple of days now. Um, I've had two coats, so it's time for them to weather these up. So what I'm going to do is I've got some q-tips here. I'm going to crush the ends of these q-tips to put a little flat on them. The reason for that is so I can get right in the corners for the top half of these gable stones if you like. Because I want the dirt to get right into the corners. So Five should be enough. Right. I've mixed up some acrylic paint here. It's a little bit of black and it's a little bit of uh, spar green. So you've got acrylic black and spar green. So what I'm going to do here is just a couple of strokes across the top, a little bit around the edges. And before it has time to dry, get our Q-tip with the round end, we'll just spread that across. Try and leave the paint on. Right, with the pointy end, we'll see if we can get some of that paint right into them corners, like so. do that after this we'll, we'll just get some black weathering to give it a sooty look. Right so don't need too much down the, the backs of this. Just a few streaks. Right now then the same goes for inside these corners here because the rain and the dust would settle on those ridges. It's, uh, whenever we go shopping in the town I always look at the architecture and how it's weathered just so I can get some ideas. All 
over it a little bit there. Yeah. A little bit across the top there, that's it. Right, I think I'll settle for that. And a bit more in that corner. Now you see the way that the black and the green seems to complement each other with the acrylics. Now that's not quite finished yet, but it's almost there. I think it just needs a very light dusting of black weathering powder across the top and in the crevices. And then I'll, I'll be happy with that. Might need a little bit more on these on these edges here. And finally, what I'm going to do now is use these Tamiya weathering paints just to darken the top and add the black because there's not a lot of black in there, it's mostly green as you can see so just by doing this it will cling to the edges more than the crevices of the brick as you can see and I think that will finish it and just run it along these bottom edges there maybe along those steps as well yeah I think I'm happy with that so now for the best bit and the best bit is, is to fit these into these walls. So first thing I've got to do is put a hole in. As you can see I've pre-marked it already with a bright hole. Now before I painted these I knew that they fitted so whether they're going to fit now I do not know. Let's do a dry fit, shall we? That should hopefully go all the way down. Sit on the bricks just like that. Look square from this side. And don't look too bad from that side. Yeah, we can level that up. Just apply the plenty of glue going into that hole. Just using PVA wood glue for this. Here we go. Mm, bit of a tight fit. There we go, it's on. Right, just got to remove all the excess glue. So that's all four corners 
of the station done now with their uh, sandstone finish um, gable end stones if you like um, might have took a while to make and such a small little insignificant um, little detail but uh, has got a big impact to it so it might not be a lot of done this week but uh, it's a start I think I mentioned in the video last week there was a couple of little jobs left to do for the canopy on the front of the station and one of them was to make some little brackets up to support the canopy now I made this or these out of a little bit of wooden beading 8mm by 10mm chopped up uh, into 2mm um, segments after I drilled 3 holes in the end uh, 1.5mm hole bang centre and then just off centre 2 little 1mm holes and this is what we've ended up with Obviously they need it paint and red yet and then they'll be glued on and then it'll look like the canopy is being supported. So as we look into next week, next week we start the fascias. Um, as you saw in my diagram and in the photographs at the beginning of the video. So that's what I'm going to be doing next, making the fascias to go across. And then once they're in, then we can start making the the big job, the oval roof. Oh, it's at a time already. Four and a half hours and this will be on YouTube. Right, so, two more things before we go. Um, firstly, I have to give a really, really big shout out to Chris at Wheezy Palace Model Railway. Um, what a guy. Um, building an N gauge layout. Um, starting it again. Um, good for you, Chris. Never give up, mate. And uh, I look forward to seeing how you get on. And secondly, I'm going to turn the lights off in a minute and we're going to see Station Road lit up because quite a few of you have asked um, to see what it would be look like with the lights on. So, I'm just going to turn the lights off so we can have a look. Um, it's 9 o'clock in the evening so it's not 100% black up here. But you can um, get an idea of what it's like in the dark. Now it's the first time I've seen this myself, especially on the street side. So as you can see, all the buildings are lit up except for the way bridge. Uh, it's not wired up yet. So here we are having a pleasant walk down Station Road. Now this is the first time I've seen Station Road lit up. So, I have something in common with you guys, especially at night. Fish and chips twice, please. Thank you, Mrs. Sims. stopped
Thanks for watching guys. Catch you all next time. Bye for now. Bye.